we continue learning more features about the programming language. The feature we're going to learn today is known as Paramtry. It allows us to define dynamic scoping in Racket. So what is dynamic scoping? You might recall this example, the same example being interpreted in two different ways. What the example has in the first line, I'm finding a variable x, and I develop, define a function f, which reads a variable x. Then I have some code that simply represents a test, test case, a test case where I define yet another variable x inside of the scope of g, right? and another y. I would expect when I run this program, x and y 23, so the input of x is 23, and what do I do here? I add 1. x is defined here, so y is going to be 23, 23 plus 1, so I would expect the result to be So if you, your intuition is that that is the case, then you are assuming a static binding or static scoping semantics of the program. So what that means is that the Y always represents the closest in closing definition of Y. So X would be the closest in closing one. In a dynamic scoping, same program ago again, but now let's interpret it with a dynamic scoping semantic. Now what matters is here you just define two placeholders, right? You two variables, y and x. The idea you have to understand from this is that x and y are going to be now not according to the program or the textual representation. It's not about the lexical, the closest thing x. It, it is actually according to the call site. Let's see what did that, does that mean? In this expression, what is the closest x and y at runtime? So the closest x and y at runtime are ex exactly these ones, are x to be 20 and y to be 20. So at call site, sorry, I need to rephrase. What I'm asking is, what is x and y at the call site? So at the call site, what I'm using, x and y is just going to be these two. Then for f, when I read the value of f, when I call the function f, x and y are these two values. So what's going to happen when you run f is you're going to look up at the call site what was x and y. A bit confusing because we are not used to it. Right? So in order to know what is the value of x, you need to look at the call site. Or to rephrase it, all variables become global. So if I define x to be 20 and y to be 3, then in, in this code, what I'm expecting is when I read the value of x, I need to ask myself what is the closest definition of x at runtime. And that would be x to be 20 and not x to be 1 because I earlier. So essentially what you see when you run this code would be 23 plus 20 since y since the x is not 1, but x. The so bottom line, in short, all variables become globals. It's quite an unwelcome feature. However, there are use cases. We're going to study two use cases. The first one is it gives you a lot of power when, you're, when you actually need globals. It is a very practical way of being able to mutate global variables without affecting or breaking other parts of the code. The other use case that we're going to study is for testing. This is actually a very welcome feature in practice, something that some frameworks actually implement in other ways. See how Racket exposes this feature. The second use case is going to be testing, and we're going to revisit our homework three. 